Some of the videos are now getting over a thousand views and getting over a hundred likes. Thank you so much for your support on this series. Today, we're going to take a look at Domino's Pizza Group PLC. <laughs> Hey there guys, how's it going? Welcome to the FTSE Show, episode number 27. My name is Chris Chillingworth and welcome to this show. Um, this is a show dedicated to ripping apart FTSE stocks, looking at the financials more than anything, uh, but really looking at investment opportunities out there across the FTSE 100, 250, uh, small cap, fledgling uh, and FTSE AIM markets. We are predominantly looking for long-term investments, growth stocks, companies that are going to rise in value over the next 5, 10, maybe even 20 years in share price. And we're looking for underlying value in these businesses. The share price itself is generally unreliable. We can sometimes find that share prices are uh, astronomically high compared to the underlying value of a business. And on some occasions, we can find that share prices are excessively cheap for some of these companies, although that's much rarer to find. And so what we're looking at here is we're looking to find the right companies to be really honing down on and spending our time investigating further. As always, I highly recommend you do your own research. All I'm sharing with you on this show is my own research in these companies and what I've been doing. Uh, and you can take from that what you will, essentially. Um, today, we're going to take a look at Domino's Pizza. So this is a company that has historically been a massive favorite amongst investors. Um, from And this is one of the these guys, are one of the few companies that have risen in value in 2020. There aren't many out there that have actually gone up rather than gone down. Uh, and I guess that's uh, they've, they've certainly announced a, a spike in demand uh, following the uh, people being stuck at home. And uh, yeah, from the 1st of January this year, they were sitting at £3.19 a share. Today, at time of recording, sitting at £3.44 a share. So they've gone up somewhat. Uh, and uh, doing pretty well, I would say, in terms of that share price. The underlying business, however, tells us a very different story. So uh, let's go and take a look. OK, let's take a look at Domino's then. Epic code is DOM. They're in the FTSE 250 in consumer services sector. So uh, Domino's were uh, very, very popular amongst investors for quite a few years, probably from, I would argue, 2008 to around 2015, 2016. Uh, we saw them rise through the indexes as well. They, they weren't always in the FTSE 250. This is a company that were previously a FTSE small cap company and they got uh, promoted, if you will. Um, by the FTSE and historically they've done really really well but let's take a look at where things are going now because I think today we're looking at a very different picture with Domino's so looking at revenue we're still going up we still got revenue growth there uh, the growth has slowed down a little bit uh, over the last year or so but there is still growth there so you can't argue there's no they're not able to find new business out there they've definitely been able to do that so that's a tick in their box there um, the uh, gross margin is also increasing. As you can see, I mean, previously we've been sitting at about 37 to uh, 39 percent. Then in 2016, we hit the 40 percent for the first time and we're now up to 46 percent. So even the margin is improving, as in the cost of sales is uh, pretty much flat, perhaps, over the last three years. Two, 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 uh, 280 million in 2017, now at 273 million in 2019. So in the last three years, cost of sales really hasn't gone up, in fact it's gone down, despite the fact that revenue's gone up, so the slice of the pie that Domino's are keeping is going up, so that's also good, this is a good thing, this is a good start. However, here's where we start to see a different picture in the expenses, which have climbed from 42% to 62%, That's, I mean, that's a massive jump in itself, right? That's an extra 20%. We've gone from 61 million in expenses to 121 million, it doubled between 2016 and 2017 it's then gone up to 146 million and now 164 million so the expenses for dominoes are skyrocketing i mean that's really incredible incredibly quick growth um, we've gone from the expenses costing dominoes 42.7 percent of their gross profit now costing them 70 percent of that gross profit 
So all the revenue growth going up and the cost of sales staying flat uh, and the slice of the pie getting bigger has been destroyed by these growing expenses in within this company. And I don't know why these expenses are going up, but the numbers don't don't lie. They tell us what's going on. Uh, clearly, expenses for some reason are going up. Uh, we've also got interest on debt rising as well. Uh, I mean, we're not talking crazy levels. We're talking about six million, so it's not a big deal. And we're dealing with hundreds of millions, um, but it is going up quite considerably because it was only at a hundred thousand uh, pounds in 2017. Now it's six point three million. So that is something to be mindful of. Uh, and these changes, the increase in expenses, the increase in in uh, interest on debt, uh, have contributed to Domino's posting their first uh, sub 10% net earnings year for a long time. Uh, now, something that I want to kind of really point out is that what I do is I like to extract extraneous circumstances, extraneous losses or profits. Usually I'm, I'm cutting out profits that aren't anything to do with the recurring everyday business of, of Domino's or whatever company we're looking at. Um, now, Domino's have actually incurred additional losses and I've cut them out because they weren't part of the everyday recurring business of Domino's. Uh, and so they've been cutting off parts of their business essentially for a loss, uh, a loss making aspects of their of their company, of their business. And over the last couple of years, they've actually made far less money than what we've got here, because uh, last year, 2018, uh, we've got them down here as 62.5, 62 62.5 million in profits in their earnings what they actually made on actual on their accounts was 43.9 million so much less uh, and that's because we've extracted the stuff that wasn't really to do with the everyday business the everyday business was doing okay but there were other aspects of the business that they sold off for a loss that ended up you know costing them money in 2019 they actually only made a 2.8 million pound profit so they brought in 508 million in revenue, but they've only made 2.8 million of that, or they kept it for the shareholders. Uh, the underlying recurring everyday business made 48 million, but we've extracted 45.2 million for uh, losses on an aspect of their business that wasn't part of the everyday recurring business of Domino's. And so as a result of that, uh, the, the actual numbers, underlying numbers, are far worse than what this even shows us. Uh, but even then, <laughs> even using our numbers, they don't look good. Over the last four years, we've gone from 18% down to 12%, down to not, what's 9.4% net earnings now in the underlying recurring business of Domino's. So something is amiss. Something's not going right. Over the last four years, things have been going in the wrong direction. Despite revenue going up, despite cost of sales, sales staying the same, expenses are, are rising very, very quickly. Interest on debts rising very, very quickly. And as a result of that, profits are falling. Um, looking at the balance sheet, the balance sheet has me concerned as well, unfortunately. Uh, first thing I notice is assets. Assets are falling. Assets fell over the last year from uh, 400 million in assets down to 350 million in assets. So that's a concern, first of all. Now, looking at long term debt, long term debt is sitting at about 250 million. It's only gone up a little bit from the previous year, but now because net earnings is falling, their earnings power is less which means it's going to be harder for them to pay off that debt. And as a result of that, we're now looking at about five years uh, worth of debt to the power of their earnings, which is, for me, that starts to get onto the point of being too high. They're starting to have too much debt relative to what they can actually make in terms of profit. And if profit was to stay at this level or get worse, then we've got some significant problems going forwards. Uh, one big concern I have for this business is the equity. So I want to point something out here. In 2016, equity was sitting at 107 million. So this is assets that the company owns. Uh, when we're talking about assets, we're talking about property, plant, equipment. We're talking about intangible assets like rights, licenses, patents. We're looking at any long term investments the company has. We're looking at uh, inventory. We're looking at cash that's actually in the bank. We're looking at uh, money that's owed to them by other companies. So all of these different things, they all count as assets. But then we have to take away, if you will, the liabilities of the company. So again, this is money they owe other people. This is short-term debt. This is tax liabilities, uh, 
long-term debt like the, the borrowings here that we've been talking about all of this kind of stuff has to be taken away what's left is the equity in the business now equity was sitting at 107 million in 2016 in 2017 that's fallen to 46 million in 2018 it's fallen 2.5 million so the equity in Domino's Pizza the UK aspect of it was 2.5 million tiny and then this year everything's still going in the wrong direction and now we're at minus 41 million in equity negative equity for dominoes as an investor that would make me run a mile i'm not interested i would be uh, all of these things are pointing in the wrong direction yes there's growth in the revenue and unfortunately for beginner investors who just focus on that they're going to become unstuck here because if you go deeper into these numbers you can see that not all is well you know they were earning 18 percent net earnings just four years ago now it's down to half that so a significant drop off in the last four years and all the numbers are looking poor retained earnings this is money that they put aside for uh, growth acquisitions mergers paying dividends whatever it might be and in the year of 2020 with all the chaos that's going on we want companies with good strong balance sheets and we are not seeing that here retained earnings in 2016 sat at 72 million by last year, it had already fallen into negative 2.6 million. In 2019's annual report that's just come out, they're minus 55 million now. So everything going in the wrong direction. They owe, they're they in a deficit for their retained earnings. Still buying back their own shares, but crikey. I mean, this is not looking good. Not what we are looking for in a growth company. Let's take a look at the uh, share price history. So the share price is doing rather well, surprisingly. Uh, we saw in the 2020, we've seen the price drop from about £3.20 down to lows of about £2.60 at one point. Uh, this is a monthly chart, I should bear in mind. Let's bring it over to a daily so we can actually get better access to or view of what's actually been going on. So from 2020, we've seen it drop down to about £2.60 and then since april in the last month basically things have really started to jump up and this might be something to do with the fact that they've been uh quite active as a business during uh the lockdown process that the uk has been going through uh and a lot of people have been using their service and we've now seen the share price for uh, rise up to three pound 44 but however, for me, we need to look at the bigger picture here. And this is a company that have been doing fantastically well for investors from, let's say, 2008 to about 2017. And now things are starting to wobble. And now we're starting to see an unstable balance sheet. And I'm concerned. This is not a company I would personally be investing in. The numbers just don't make sense for me. We've got a company with negative equity. So for the share price of £3.44 a share, as a part owner of this business, we're getting more liabilities and we're getting assets. We're taking on more liabilities than assets here. And we've got earnings per share of about 12p a share when we're buying shares for £3.44. That doesn't strike me as good business. Uh, and if we were to buy all the shares in this company, uh, we wouldn't be getting very good returns. On, uh, on the earnings and we certainly wouldn't be doing very well in terms of the assets or the equity of the business so for me there are far better opportunities out there and I don't think dominoes are going to score particularly highly this is why I do analysis on price because I can look at a company and I look at the financials and the like the financials can look very good but the price doesn't make any sense right now and so that company will end up in my watch list and I'll keep an eye on that share price looking for the right price to get into that company and that's something that we focus the whole section of the uh, the invest in learning how to analyze companies course that I've created uh, on because there's a it's very important that we get in at the right prices at prices that make sense and that we're not overpaying for shares uh, here Domino's pizza at £3.44 does not make financial sense and we've also got that worry of the balance sheet and all the numbers starting to point down with the drop in of uh, net earnings. Price and value are very different things. Here is a company whose value is really falling, but the share price hasn't really fallen right now. And I think that may well be to come if things continue in this fashion uh, and, and we see probably one more year's worth of annual report come out. Uh, this is not a company that I would be looking at holding for 10 years because I think next year, if we do see that annual report come out and it's worse 
or just as bad as this year, I think we can see that share price maybe fall quite considerably. Uh, because it doesn't, doesn't make sense anymore at £3.44 a share. Uh, there are some massive fans of Domino's, and I know this probably this video is going to get a bit of stick. The Rolls-Royce one got some stick the other day. I've had a lot of people complain that uh, I, I should be giving Rolls-Royce a bit more support. Uh, that's not what I'm all about. I'm looking at the facts. I'm not interested in emotional attachment to companies. And uh, I think even today, Rolls-Royce have just announced another 9,000 job cuts. So, you know, there's a reason why that's happening. It's because they don't make sense uh, as an investment. And uh, I feel the same about Domino's, unfortunately, based on the facts that we are looking at today. Let's go and take a look and see how they did on the leaderboard. OK, so doesn't look as pretty as uh, they once did. And if we look at that share price and look at how it's done... Uh, in 2002, when the, the stock first floated on the exchange, we're looking at 10 pence a share. Uh, by 2017, up to £3.62 a share. So over 2002 to 2017, a fantastic stock to have in your portfolio. Absolutely. And had you had that stock in your portfolio, you would have done very, very well. Uh, certainly from about 2008 onwards to 2017. So over that kind of 10 year period, fantastic stock to have. However, recent years are starting to show a bit of a wobble. And some of the, uh, if you remember in that section where we looked at the numbers, uh, we I was talking about how they'd actually made less money than what we were looking at because we'd extracted some extraneous uh, losses this time. So not necessarily extraneous profits, but extraneous losses. Those losses are dominoes selling their international aspects of their business. So they're selling off... Uh, their Norwegian aspect of their business. Uh, I think Sweden is on the cards now as well. Uh, they're also selling off their Icelandic business, their Switzerland business and their Luxembourg business, uh, as well as a stake that they have in Germany. They're selling all these off because all of them are losing money and all of them have lost them tens of millions of pounds essentially and so as they're selling these off they're selling them off at massive losses and so that is what's causing the underlying loss now again like i reiterate when i'm looking at those numbers i've already extracted those from the results so i'm only looking at the recurring everyday revenue of dominoes uh, and the uk arm of dominoes so any losses they've made from selling off sections of the business i've not included in the process what it would actually show us is that Domino's are doing far worse. But I'm not interested in the sales of assets uh, and the, the loss that they've made on them because just like we, they, couldn't, uh, they couldn't account or they couldn't count on the income coming in in the future if they were selling them off for a profit, they're not necessarily going to be incurring those losses in the future because they, they won't have them to sell off again, if that makes sense. So they are extraneous. They are nothing to do with the recurring everyday business of, of Domino's Pizza Group PLC. And so we we're just looking at the underlying business. And even then, the underlying business still doesn't look healthy. It's still going in the wrong direction. And um, we've also noticed as well directors leaving the company. Uh, the chairman has stepped down. There was unfortunately a death on the board as well from a snorkeling accident, apparently. But all of these things just kind of give us the taste that maybe something's not quite right at Domino's. And unfortunately, the numbers are telling us the same thing. And uh, there is a concern there. So for me, I'm going nowhere near Domino's, unfortunately. They've had a great run from 2008 to 2017. I would class that as a very, very good run. But unfortunately, something's going on there in the business that keeps me away as an investor. So it's time to get them up on the board um, and give them their score. Unfortunately for Domino's, we have the red pen. <laughs> the dreaded red pen, as someone mentioned in the comments. And uh, listen... We're gonna. I might get some stick for this because I know Domino's have a lot of fans out there. You know, if you've been a shareholder of Domino's from 2008 onwards, you'll absolutely have fallen in love with this stock. Uh, and I get that. I, it makes sense. But listen, when we did the Rolls Royce video, I got about four or five emails from some very angry viewers who were very upset that I had damaged or tarnished Rolls Royce's name. Uh, because they were avid fans of the brand. Well, listen, I don't care about any of that. That's all just emotional baggage, you know. It's not 
quite relevant to me. And that's further confirmed by the fact that I think today Rolls-Royce announced their axial another 9,000 jobs, I think. Uh, so the numbers really do give us a very good picture of what's going on in these companies, regardless of whether or not you like the business, you like the product, you like the service, uh, whether you've fallen in love with that stock because it's done well for you over the last 10 years, whatever it might be, whether they're British and you know we should all be standing together with British businesses. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm just interested in the facts. What are the facts telling us? What are the numbers telling us? The numbers tell me Domino's are not a good investment for me right now. They're not a company that I'm interested in. And unfortunately, based on my scoring algorithm, they do not do very well. They score minus 23 points. So we're going to chuck them up on the board. So you've got to give them some credit, right? They're better than Dixon's. They're better than Rolls-Royce. They're better than Centrica, Vodafone, Tesco's, BP. They're a better investment than all of those right now. But I still, for me, they're still not a good investment for the long term. And unfortunately, there's too many concerns there for me to be an investor in this company. Guys, I hope you are finding this series entertaining. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope my love of digging through stocks is coming out in these videos because I really enjoy it. You know, I can spend hours and hours every day trawling through financial statements, looking at these companies and putting my spin on what I'm seeing. I hope you're still enjoying the show, and I hope you'll continue to like and support and subscribe to the show going forward. Thank you so much for your support so far, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.